something happened to me and it uh, was the most frightening thing I think I've ever seen I usually don't do videos like this I don't think I ever have I've been watching a, a guy on YouTube and he's been talking about politically incorrect things about what a man is and what a woman is and and he makes a lot of sense and I look at the world around me and I think there's something wrong with me I, I'm not like everybody else and I mean I clearly know that I mean who else would live in a little tiny house without any electric other than what you can get from the solar panels N nobody does this try to be independent as possible I don't want to be a social butterfly and this is wrong society frowns on this it's incredible to me how many people require self-medication of some sort alcohol or something they, they, they have to self-medicate I had a cousin I think he was maybe 10 years older than me lived in st. Louis well I guess a suburb of st. Louis pretty rough neighborhood I would imagine he was one of those tough guys I mean obviously you had to be a tough guy to live in the suburb of st. Louis now I heard a story one time I don't know how true it was he denies it but I heard that he ran away from home or got kicked out of his home and he came back to his home and beat up his mother now a few months days weeks I don't know but in my mind it seemed like it happened yesterday my sister was in the hospital I'm gonna talk about my sister here in a minute so I had to stay with my aunt who in my mind just got beat up by her son and I, I was just so terrified and I remember asking my aunt this is why I don't understand what's wrong with my memory because I clearly remember asking my aunt do you think my cousin I'm not gonna mention his name will be back in tonight he, he was terrifying I was terrified of him my entire life until a few years ago 10 15 years ago and he contacted me I actually saw him on TV he was on TV don't want to get into that either but he was on TV and I saw him on TV and I guess all this kind of transpired because of the TV thing but anyway after all those years of me not speaking to him since I was a little kid to I'm what 40 45 years old I explained to him why I was not interested in reuniting our family tree or anything I, I just wasn't interested in talking to him and I said you quite frankly you just scare me but the more I talked to him the more I realized he was terrified of life he could not function he was completely disabled he just couldn't function without being self-medicated and I found that fascinating I don't do drugs I don't drink I have tried to face life head-on no matter how bad the injury no matter how bad it hurts I've tried to face it I'm just kind of a well I was bullied in high school pretty badly I was a scrawny kid I, I weighed less than 100 pounds in my sophomore year I was really scrawny I ran cross-country and track distance track and I, I just there was no way to defend myself it, just, it was just impossible so you just constantly took a beating and you kept going back to school every day every day taking a beating and in, in, in my freshman year it was required every day in shop class that they all got to beat on my arm just as hard as they could they would all take a swing at me and, and people will laugh at me <laughs> but think about the courage that takes to go in every day drug free alcohol free and watch all these druggies and alcoholics beat on you every day it takes a lot of courage but I'm the coward I've always been the coward people will constantly call me the coward the people who cannot get through life without being self-medicated call me the coward one of the reasons I'm a coward is because I don't self-medicate oh you're a prude I don't even know what that means I mean I do but it's a ridiculous statement you who can't function are gonna call me a coward and a prude my sister was severely handicapped she died when she was 18 she was three foot tall you may remember the TV show different strokes there was a girl on there in a wheelchair the girl had the same disease as my sister osteogenesis imperfective so my sister broke bones very easily 
I think she had something like 70 broken bones by the time she died. She died in a car accident. Well, imagine you have to tippy toe around your sister all the time. Don't break your sister. That is the number one rule in the house. Don't break your sister. And two times I broke my sister. Two times. Now imagine this. You don't, you're not allowed to break your sister. This is absolutely forbidden. You are not allowed to do it. Severe punishment will happen if you break your sister. Don't roughhouse with your sister. Don't do anything that's going to hurt your sister because the slightest little touches can break her bones. Imagine she, when she was, I don't know, two, three, four years old, she tried to stand up. Stand up, that's all. And, and her leg broke. So that's how fragile she was. I'm a year older than my sister. I'm not that much older. Mom was actually in the living room, as I recall, and we had this little pillow flight. You know, the, the couch pillows, not like, you know, big monster pillows, little couch pillows. And my sister threw a pillow at me and I whacked her and I broke her. Now that one wasn't quite as terrifying to me because Mom was in the room. She could have stopped that, that. she could have, but she didn't get upset either. So I was, that one was okay. But the next time, wasn't okay. I mean, I don't remember getting in trouble, but I knew I was going to. And that was probably more fearful than anything. Your parents may have said, go in the bedroom, take your shorts down, wait for me, I'm gonna come in and whip you. And then they wait five, six, ten hours, and okay, come on out, and they never did whip you. So the whole time you were just absolutely frightened that you're gonna get whipped. The fear of getting whipped probably hurt worse than getting whipped itself. So my sister and I were sitting out in the truck while mom was in the grocery store. There was a straw and we were playing tug of war with the straw. Now, I know my sister breaks. I know not to pull too hard, yet I broke her arm. And I had to sit in that car waiting for mom to get back into the car. It was terrifying, the most fearful thing I've ever experienced. I mean, it was, it was just, oh. And my sister, who is not crying, who is not acting like she's injured. I mean, I knew I injured her, I heard it pop it was terrible as a matter of fact still yet today i cannot watch a movie where they break a bone i can't it's just it, it just ah oh, it just eats at me i remember my sister sitting there saying it's okay it's okay i won't tell on you well how are you not going to tell on me i guess she thought i don't know at the time i couldn't understand how you were going to hide a broken arm from your mother my mother our mother but now I'm older, I think what she meant was she was going to lie and say I didn't do it, that she, she did something else. But at 18, and I didn't have a job, just graduated, trying to find a job. So I joined the military and I went on a submarine. Now, the thing about the submarine was it wasn't that bad. I, I really kind of enjoyed it. And I don't find it that I was that fearful of it. But today, people will still tell me, oh, I couldn't do that. You're crazy. So I'm crazy that you can't do it, yet I'm the coward, I'm the prude, I'm the wuss. I look at life a little differently. I don't need to go around sticking up my chest. I mean, I literally knew a guy, he was probably four foot tall, walked around like this. Every sentence out of his mouth, there was an F word involved. He could not speak without the F word. Now this guy was a maintenance manager in a manufacturing sheltered workshop. It was a professional position. And he was just like this, and he was always wanting to kick my hind side. Always, he just couldn't stand me, hated me. Ah, oh, and then he would talk about his wife. I'll tell you a thing or two. This is how you treat your woman. You go around slapping her, you know. I don't know if he ever said that, but it sure did give me the impression that she better behave because if she doesn't, and I never looked at it that way. When I was on a submarine, there was a senior chief, Senior Chief Smith, great guy, but he'd been in trouble a lot. Usually when you're, you know, got good behavior, after so many years, you get all these golden stripes on your arm. He never got those golden stripes. And he was telling me how you're supposed to treat your wife. Fortunately, he liked me. That was a good thing because I could have gotten in trouble. I, I think I could have gotten in trouble. But he's telling me, this is how you treat your wife. Don't speak to your wife. D don't talk to her. You're going to train her to basically do what a dog does, hand signals. You're going to just hand signal. She's going to know exactly what you want. He says, one of the things I do, this was up in Washington State. When I have two Rainier beers left, I have this Rainier carton that I've cut out. You know, it says Rainier on it. I uh, stick it on the refrigerator and put a magnet on it. She knows she better refill my Rainier beer. I said, senior chief, I said, 
I don't think that's how you're supposed to treat a woman. I said, a real man opens the door for his wife. A real man will pull out her chair when she's about ready to sit down. Because one thing you have to remember is she is willing to crawl into bed with you every night. Now, of course, we were sailors back then, so the language was a lot more rough. But I've always said you treat your women with respect. There is no reason to treat them like a dog. They're not your pet. They're, you don't own them. They're there voluntarily, willingly, because there is a relationship there. And you're not the boss of it. But I'm the coward. I'm the wuss. I'm the one that have to face men like Senior Chief Smith, who tells me I'm a wuss because I don't treat my wife correctly. You gotta show them who's boss. Tell them who's wearing the pants in the family. So recently, I've been called a coward twice living here. And I find it ironic that I'm the coward, yet I can almost bet these people who are calling me a coward can't seem to get through life without being self-medicated. Told you a while back there's this troll that I have. He makes videos of me. There's actually, there have been three of them, but th this particular one, I know he's still bothered by me. He hates me. He just can't stand the fact that I exist, much less make money off YouTube. That's just terrible. He, he's making a video about me and he's doing a live feed while he's making it because he wants to show me who's boss. And he's stumbling all over himself. He can't already stand up. And he's got his pistols. He's holding his pistols. And he's trying to set them in front of his computer. Of course, he's just drunk out of his mind. He's trying to set his pistols down. And he's pointing them at himself. You know, he's a real man. He's got guns. He's going to show me who's boss. And he sets them down and they fall over. You're going to tell me who's boss, but you can't even hold the gun. Go ahead, shoot. I'm not in fear of you actually hitting me because you're going to see two of me. He's the man. He's the one who's going to show me a lesson with his, his guns. But he can't even get through a video sober. He's got to get all his manhood and courage up by drinking so he can make a video and show me who's boss. Yet I face life every day. So I was called a coward. The other day I told you that back in November a dog came and killed her chickens. And I was saying how I'm not a big fan of killing dogs. It's not something I like to do. It's not something I just dream of. Oh, I'm going to go around there shooting those dogs. And every time I say that I don't want to shoot a dog, well, you just need to man up, take care of business. Those are your chickens. You need to teach people in your area a lesson. Now, let me think about this. In order to be a man, in order to be a tough guy, in order to face the challenges of the world, I have to shoot a dog. That, that makes me a man. So there's a badge of honor somewhere that I will receive when I shoot a dog. Now that's not to say I've never shot a dog before, because I have. I said, I don't like it. And then I said in the video, there are a lot of people who seem to think that's just the only thing you're supposed to do, is go around shooting dogs. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. And then the next time was, I was telling you that we had a chicken that broke his leg. Recently, I've decided that I'm not going to share with my audience when I have to butcher chickens. My audience doesn't like it. They don't want me to talk about it. I get a lot of negative feedback from it. I get a lot of people unsubscribing because I said I butcher chicken, so I don't talk about it. So in this video, I didn't mention that I put the chicken out of them as misery. You're a coward. You need to learn how to take care of business. You need to kill these chickens. And I can guarantee you, they probably never had to do it themselves. I could do it. Yeah, after you had you know, 10, 20 beers. That's about the only way you can do it. So I'm quite honored to be a coward. I'm honored that I can face life as it is. If a challenge is thrown at me, I'm honored that I run right into it. Whether I want to or not, whether I'm scared or not, I go ahead and do it. And there's been plenty of times I've been just completely terrified. Completely terrified that my mother is gonna return to that pickup truck and find out that I broke my sister's arm, that was terrifying. But I went through life without needing drugs and alcohol to cover up these fears. So I've said that there are solutions to getting away from self-medicating. Clean up your diet. Eat a meat diet. Get rid of your anxiety. Get rid of your depression. Carolyn has. She started eating meat. No more anxiety. No more depression. But then I'm told, no, you got to have carbohydrates while you're drinking carbohydrates. 
It's an addiction. All of it's an addiction. Even fear. Because your brain produces cortisol. When you have an anxiety attack, your brain is producing cortisol. Cortisol is addictive. So everything you do to talk about your manhood is because you're addicted. I just don't have these addictions. I drink coffee, admittedly. So if you click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about the rooster. So I hope I can inspire you. To... <clears throat> so I hope I can inspire you to be a real man. So you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.